Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, my name is Bryce, and today we are going to be looking at tablet number 10 of the Emerald Tablets. This tablet is titled The Key of Time. If you have missed the prior tablets, they will all be down in the description box below. So feel free to go back and rewatch all of the other nine tablets we've covered before tablet number 10. Now, of course, last week, tablet nine was the key of space. And I've said many times before, especially when we've been talking about time, space, space, time, that these are concepts that typically are pretty hard for the human brain to understand. This is also being spoken about on our Tuesday material, which is the channeling from the Octurian anthology. The Octurian group talks about this. We're human beings because of our third density have a understanding of time as linear, where in most um, other galaxies, if you will, or um, densities, time is not necessarily linear. And I think this is something that our consciousness, our soul understands, but our brain, our human brain does not quite understand i said for me it's so weird to think about like past lives and future lives actually playing out simultaneously with this life that we are presently in of course this is that concept is also spoken about this in the sophia code which we've covered on this channel extensively and if you want to get into the sophia code i will place the uh playlist understanding the magdalene down below so you can get into the sophia code as well we're also covering the sophia code again on Wednesdays on Solutions by Aquarius Rising Africa. And again, don't forget to join us on Mondays as we go into a live discussion. So what I typically do on this channel is I read through the Emerald Tablets and then we have a live discussion and a second read through over on Aquarius Rising Africa on Mondays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Again, that's a live discussion. So you are free to join us over on Aquarius Rising Africa to join in on this discussion to give your ideas, your input, and your thoughts on each tablet as we go through them. So as we've been doing, I'm going to read through first thoughts, teachings, and then we're going to go back and look at Doriel's commentary. And I think for this key, I've already kind of looked through, there's not much commentary from Doriel on this, on this key, but I do also want to reiterate, I said this over on Aquarius Rising Africa as well. There are many commentaries on um, the Emerald Tablets. I've read from a secondary commentary over for the third tablet i the only reason why i picked to do doriel's commentary is because doriel is used by a lot of scholars that i respect including billy carson but as i've said many times before just because i'm reading through doriel's commentary on this channel does not mean that doriel's opinions and research into this are the end all be all there are a lot of great commentaries out there and if you have the time and if you have the money then I would suggest getting as many commentaries as you can. I typically do that with the yoga stuff that I work through. I get as many commentaries as I can because I want to see what everyone has to say. Um, and just because there's one commentary that you really like doesn't mean you're not going to gain insight from somebody else's opinions. And when you're reading through a commentary, you know, there's some things Doriel has said that I don't necessarily agree with. But that's okay, because a lot of the things he does say I appreciate and I do agree with. You don't have to agree with everything to like somebody's commentary. Kind of weird that we have to say that in our timeline now, but that's how it seems to be socially. It's like, anyway, that's one of the problems with humanity right now is that we, we can't understand that sometimes different opinions are, are healthy and necessary. But I digress. So I use Doriel's commentary. You can find this anywhere, any bookstore, any seller sells Doriel's commentary. You can also find free PDFs online of the Emerald Tablets themselves. So I really highly suggest you get your own copies of these works so that you can work through them on your own too. All right, let's get started with Tablet 10, The Key of Time. List ye, O man, take of my wisdom. Learn of the deep hidden mysteries of space. Learn of the thought that grew in the abyss. Bring order and harmony in space. And so this is the key of time. The last key was the key of space. And so basically in the last key, if you guys remember, he talked about the dichotomy between the human body and the human soul, which is something we talk about a lot on this channel, that the soul and the human body are two very different things. The body is the shakti. It's the expression of the soul, but it's not the soul. And because the soul is immortal, you can't kill a soul because the soul will continue after the body dies. The soul 
is confined to the laws of space, not necessarily the laws of time, whereas the body is confined to the laws of time, right? The, the samskaric, um, the prakriti, the nature, the birth, life, death, the everything in fluctuation and change, the matter of it all. And because it's nature, because there is in nature certain laws, that means that death will eventually come to the body. And that is what Patanjali in the Yoga Sutra says is the is the reason for man's suffering is that we confuse who we think we are with who we really are. Who we think we are are these identities. Who I think I am is Bryce. That's not who I am eternally, though. Bryce is just a temporary experience. My soul is just living out the experience of Bryce for my soul to refine itself, right? And the soul then, therefore, does not follow the laws of nature like the body does because the soul will not die, frankly. All right, so he's talking about that, the hidden mysteries of space and the thought that grew in the abyss. So the thought, the yoga chitta vritti narodaha, the vritti, the thought, comes from the shakti, the created experience of the soul. So the thought that grew in the abyss is basically what created time, right? So let me read that again. List you, man, and take of my wisdom. Learn of the deep hidden mysteries of space. Learn of the thought that grew in the abyss bringing order and harmony in space. And I will say a little off subject, if you hear banging around once again, if you're new to this channel, I live right in the middle of Atlanta, Georgia, and they are literally building a high rise less than 10 feet from my window. So if you hear banging around, there's unfortunately not much I can do about it. it just is what it is. Know ye, O oh man, that all that exists has being only because of the law. Know ye the law, and ye shall be free. Never be bound by the fetters of night. And in previous tablets, he's spoken about the law. What is the law? Well, the law is the universal laws of attraction, of, of um, vibration. You can go back and rewatch those tablets or reread if you have a copy of the Emerald Tablets, what he's speaking about. When he talks about the universal laws, these are all very common sense laws, right? Far through the strange spaces have I journeyed into the depths of the abyss of time, learning strange and yet stranger mysteries, until in the end all will be revealed. Know ye that the mystery is only mystery when it is knowledge unknown to man. When ye have plumbered the heart of all mystery, knowledge and wisdom will surely be thine. It's kind of the same same definition of the occult, right? The occult basically means hidden knowledge. If it's not hidden, then it's not the occult. Occult itself is not necessarily a bad thing. It's just people use it for bad purposes. It's just hidden. That's all it means. And yeah, once you know it, once you've solved the mystery, it's no more mystery anymore, right? And in the end, all will be revealed. There will be no more mysteries in the end. Seek ye and learn that time is the secret whereby ye may be free of this space. Long have I thought, sought wisdom, I, and shall seek to eternity's end. For know that I have ever before me receding shall move the goal I seek to attain. Even the lords of the cycles know that yet they have they reached the goal. For with all their wisdom, they know that truth ever grows." Once in past time, I spoke to the dweller, asked of the mysteries of time and space, asked him the question that surged in my being, saying, Oh, master, what is time? Then he spoke to me, he, the master, know ye, O oh, thought, in the beginning there was void and nothingness, a timeless, spaceless nothingness. And into the nothingness came a thought purposeful, all pervading, and it filled the void. There existed no matter, only force, a movement, a vortex of vibration of the purposeful thought that filled the void. So he's saying there existed no matter, only force. Well, force can be seen as the consciousness, the soul, the Shiva that created the matter. People often argue what came first, the body or the spirit. Well, in spirituality, in Eastern spirituality especially, that's simple. The spirit came first because spirit is what is consciousness. Consciousness is a Shiva. That creates the Shakti of the experience of matter, of nature, of the body, of the life. And I question the master saying, was this thought eternal? And answered me the dweller saying, in the beginning, there was eternal thought. And for thought to be eternal, time must exist. 
So into all pervading thought grew the law of time. That makes sense. For something to be eternal, meaning it never dies, there has to be the comprehension of a timeline, right? It's just like Thoth said earlier, that we only understand life because we understand death. Because we understand the death of the body, the cycles of life, that's the only reason why we understand life exists at all anyway. When there is no death, there can actually be no existence of life. That's why Shiva and Shakti work together. I, time which exists through all space, floating in a smooth, rhythmic movement that is eternal in a state of fixation. Time changes not, but all things change in time. For time is the force that holds events separate, each in its proper place. Time is not in motion. For you move through time as your consciousness moves from one event to another. I, by time, ye exist all in all, and eternal one exist. Know ye that even though in time ye are separate, you are still one in all times existent. Cease then the voice of the dweller, and departed I to ponder on time. For I knew that in these words lay wisdom, a way to explore the mysteries of time. So once again, this goes back to the time, I mean, the tablet that I referenced just a few moments ago, where we don't, even though death is an illusion, even though the only thing that dies is the body, the soul keeps living, because we experience that illusion, we understand life. Because we experience time, time itself does not exist. It's a placeholder for our experiences in the body, right? Your childhood is a placeholder. The time didn't change. Children right now are experiencing their placeholder of childhood while you watching are experiencing a placeholder of adulthood. So time is not changing. It's your consciousness re recognizing an event or an experience that is part of the dance within the nature of thought because thought is the original vibration that created the matter. I hope that makes sense. I know that can be very deep philosophy. If this is a philosophy that you're interested in learning more of, I would definitely suggest reading the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali because Patanjali and the whole Yoga Sutras are dedicated to this specific philosophy. Oft did I ponder the words of the dweller, then sought I to solve the mystery of time. Found I that time moves through strange angles, yet only by curves could I hope to attain the key that would give me access to the time space. Found that I only by moving upward, and yet again moving to the rightward, could I be free from the time of this movement. Forth I came from out of my body, moved in the moments that changed me in time. Strange were the sights I saw in my journeys, many the mysteries that open to view. I saw a man's beginning, learn from the past that is nothing new. Seek you, man, to learn the pathways that lead through the spaces that are formed forth in time. Forgot not, O oh man, with all thy seeking, that light is the goal you seek to obtain. Search ye ever for light on thy pathway, and ever for the goal shall endure. Let not thy heart turn ever to darkness. Let, let thy soul be a sun on the way. Know ye that in the eternal brightness ye shall ever find thy soul hid in light. Never fettered by bondage to darkness, ever it shines forth a sun of the light. I know through hidden darkness your soul, a spark of the true flame exists. Be ye one with the greatest of all lights. Find the source, the end of thy goal. And again, this is taking back to these illusions we live in. Um, it speaks a lot about not being bound by darkness, not being hithered or distracted by the darkness. We know, again, this is the macro and the micro. As we've seen in these tablets, he very much is talking about the macro as far as there being forces out there that are trying to hurt you. We call them the controllers today. But there's also your own shadow side, right? There's your own darkness that really is what's really keeping you in your own slavery. It's your own, your own yoga, your own thoughts, right? Your own 
fears, your your shadow side is things that you struggle with, like anger, jealousy, betrayal, anything, you name it, which which brings your vibration down lower. And that vibration, that lower vibration is the only way that dark entities can attach to you because the things that you where you shine, your faith in God, your good personality, your your ability to laugh at things, those are things that darkness can't touch because they can't reach that vibration. Now, if you have issues, we all do. Listen, if you're alive, you still got shadow to work on. There's That's always going to be your work. Your karma is your shadow side. But if you refuse to work on your shadow side, then you become even more bound in darkness. So if you refuse to work on your jealousy, if you refuse to work on yourself, then you will become more and more bound by that darkness that is coming from you. We've said it many times on this channel, if we want to end human trafficking, if we want to end these things that are happening, yes, there has to be an outward knowledge of these things, but we also have to heal ourselves. So vibrationally, these things can't coexist. I hope that makes sense. So he's telling you, while you are contemplating this concept of time, while you are here in human form, your job is to work through this illusion. By working through this illusion, you're also going to be confronting your own shadow side, your own darkness, your own karmic reactions, so that you don't get bound by the illusion of time, bound by the illusion of who you are is not really who you are. And if we think about our world today, all of our institutions, our religions, especially the Christian church, especially academia, especially politics are all created to keep us down to not allow us to be what we are supposed to be, which is that eternal soul, having that human experience, understanding that's what we're having so that we can refine our soul. This teachings of thought mimic, if you've been around for a while, you know this, they mimic the real teachings of Yeshua, who people call Jesus, but his name was Yeshua. The, the Jesus in the Bible, his teachings are, are not the actual teachings. That's a manipulation to try to keep you down, right? So this is mirroring a lot of the same teachings of all these big ascended master teachers that have been around. Light is life. For without the great light, nothing can ever exist, right? We know this from the law of one. Darkness cannot create anything. Only light can create. So for all of you guys out there that think we have to destroy everything that the controllers have used, you are sorely mistaken. Light is the only creator. What the darkness has done, what it tends to do is it takes from the light, it mimics the light, or it steals and inverts the light. So if we got rid of everything that the controllers have touched and, and hurt, we would, we, would have, we would have nothing left. And it's out, all ours to begin with. So we need to heal our God, the true God, the true source, is a true source of love, mercy, and healing. Lucifer, the darkness, on the other hand, is destruction. So if you're hell bent on destruction, then you're falling right into the trap of the darkness. Because like he said, life, light is life. For without the great light, nothing can ever exist. There can be nothing, right? Know ye that in all formed matter, the heart of light always exists. I, even though bound in darkness, inherit light always exists. Once I stood in the halls of Amente and heard the voice of the lords of Amente saying in tones that rang through the silence, words of power, mighty and potent. Chanted they the songs of the cycles, the words that opened the path to beyond. I, I saw the great path opened and looked for an instant into the beyond. Saw I the movements of the cycles, vast as the thought of the source could convey. Knew I then that even infinity is moving on to some unthinkable end. Saw I that the cosmos is order and part of a movement that extends to all space, a part of an order of orders, constantly moving in a harmony of space. Saw I the wheeling of cycles, like vast circles across the sky. Knew I then that all that has being is growing to meet yet other being in a far off grouping of space and time. Knew I then that in words are power to open the planes that are hidden from men. I, and even in the words, lies hidden the key that will open above and below. Hark ye now, man, this word I leave with thee. Use it, and ye shall find the power in the sound. Say ye the word, Zen Uril, and power ye shall find. You must, yet ye must understand that man is of light. 
and light is of man. List ye, O man, and hear a mystery, stranger than all that lies neath the sun. Know ye, O man, that all space is filled by the worlds within worlds. I, one within the other, yet separate by law. That's the densities, right? We know we have fourth density entities around us, fifth density entities around us, but we cannot see them because of the law of third density, which is the law of choice. And because there is a law of choice, those of the light side of fourth density cannot interfere, even though they are, are around us. Once in my search for deep buried wisdom, I opened a door that bars them from man. Called I from other planes of being one who was fairer than the daughters of men. I, I called her from out of the spaces to shine as a light in the world of men. Used I the drum of the serpent, wore I the robe of purple and gold. Placed on the hand, I placed the crown of silver. Around me the circle of cinnabar shone. Raised I my arms and cried the invocation that opens the path to the plains beyond. Cried to the lords of the signs in their houses, Lords of the two horizons, watchers of the troubled gates, stand ye one at the right and one at the left, at the star rises from his throne and rules over his sign. I, thou dark prince Ariel, open the gates of the dim hidden land and release her whom you have kept in prison. So Ariel, we've seen this name before in a lot of the missing books of the Bible, if you guys remember that name Ariel being the being kind of the captor of darkness. So when I read that, I kind of got goosebumps because I'm reading this for the first time with you guys. And that is in the missing books of the God Bible too. This darkness called Ariel. So he put on the garb he needed. And drum of the serpent. Let's talk about the serpent again. Many people, especially coming from a Christian background, think the serpent is bad. No, again, let me reiterate. The darkness cannot create anything. Serpents were created by the same God who created you. We talk about the serpent a lot in Eastern philosophy as the representation of things like Kundalini, which is another word for Christ consciousness. The serpent rises. So when we look at the, the, the human body, the lower chakras, Muladhara Uptamani Pura, this is the base of Kundalini. This is also where we find a lot of the darker shadow work that we, we have to really go down into the depths of our own hell literally to heal those parts of us and then that serpent that's living there can rise through shashumna the spine to bring the enlightenment the christ consciousness so and he's asking for the this person to be released from the imprisonment so this is probably another example of macro and micro asking for an entity to be released but also when you do your own work you go down into the gates of your own hell you can release your own cell from the imprisonment of darkness within your mind Hear ye, hear ye, hear ye, dark lords and shining ones, and by their secret names, names which I know and can pronounce, hear ye and obey my will. Lit I then with flame my circle and called her in the space plains beyond. Daughter of light, return from Arula seven times, and seven times have I passed through the fire. Food have I not eaten, water have I not drunk. I call thee from Arula, from the realms of Ekershigal, I summon thee, Lady of Light. Then before me rose the dark figure, I, the figures of the lords of Arula, parted they before me, and forth came the Lady of Light. Free was she now from the lords of the night, free to live in the light of the earth's sun, free to live as a child of light. Hear ye and list, O my, o my children, magic is knowledge, and only is law. Be not afraid of power within thee, for it follows law as the stars in the sky. Know ye that he without knowledge, wisdom is magic and not of the law. But know ye that ever ye by your knowledge can approach closer to a place in the sun. List ye my children, follow my teachings, be ye ever seeker of light, shine in the world of men all around thee, a light on the path that shall shine among men. Follow ye and learn of my magic. Know that all force is thine if thou wilt. Fear not the path that leads thee to knowledge, but rather shun ye the dark road. Light is thine, O man, for the taking. Cast off the feathers and thou shalt be free. Know ye that thy soul is living in bondage, fettered by the fear that holds ye in thrall. You, you're holding yourself in bondage by your mind by not doing your shadow work. It's all you, baby. It's all you. You are the storm. 
Open thy eyes and see the great sunlight. Be not afraid, for all is thine own. Fear is the Lord of the dark, our ruler, for he who has never faced the dark, fear. I know that fear has existence created by those who are bound by their fear. So fear only exists. What is the saying? We have nothing to fear but fear itself. Fear only exists because you are creating the fear. Remember, darkness can't create anything, darling. Baby cakes, it's all you. You're creating the fear. Fear is false evidence appearing real. You release the fear. My teacher in India says that to us all the time. Why fearing? Why fearing? Why are you afraid? Do you not know who you are? You are a powerful person. You are the storm. Why are you afraid? Release the fear. That's one of the steps. Work on yourself. Face your own darkness. Release yourself from the grips of the bondage of your mind that keeps you bound to the illusion of your body. Shake off thy bondage, O children, and walk in the light of the glorious day. Never turn thy thoughts to darkness, and surely ye shall be one with the light. Man is only what he believeth. Man is only what he believeth. A brother of darkness or a child of light. Come thou into the light, my children. Walk in the pathway that leads to the sun. Hark ye now and list to the wisdom. Use thou the word I have given unto thee. Use it and surely thou shalt find power and wisdom and light to walk in the way. Seek thee and find the key I have given and ever shalt thou be a child of the light. All right, that's thoughts. Tablet number 10, key of time. We're going to go back and look at Doriel's. He's got a very short commentary here on uh, Tablet 10. But before we do that, a very special word from our sponsors. My Uncle Dan used to talk about QTR. QTR meant for him quality time remaining. My Uncle Dan was a very active cyclist and a very avid hiker. And after he retired, after a long career, he decided that he really wanted to make the most of the years he had left where there was quality to his life before the aging process really limited his ability to enjoy things like cycling and hiking. Unfortunately, my Uncle Dan did lose his battle to cancer back in 2019, but when I was first introduced to the ASEA product, all I kept thinking about was my Uncle Dan and his concoction post-retirement of quality time remaining. As human beings, we've been taught that as our body starts to age, we eventually have to start giving up some of the activities that we enjoyed. For my uncle, that was cycling and hiking. With the ASEA supplement, what this product does is it restores signaling back into the body. Signaling, our communication between the cells of the body, is what actually allows the aging process to happen. Your body is designed by nature, by God, whatever you want to call that higher consciousness, it's designed to heal itself. That's why the cells communicate. That's why you have an immune system. But unfortunately, as we become conditioned to the toxins of this world, that immune system and that signaling system start to wear down. When our body loses signaling, that's what causes wrinkles. That's what causes cellulite. That's what causes the hair to gray. And for men, that's potentially what causes hair loss. As Dr. Silverman has used as an example, when we are a child and we fall off of our bicycle and skin our knees, our recovery time is pretty quick. This is because we have an abundance of redox or signaling in our bodies. But after puberty and into our adulthood, we rapidly start to lose this signaling. So if we were to fall off a bike at 80, that could mean life or death. Now for me, since I've been on the SIA now for about three months, I have noticed a tremendous amount of energy and endurance restored back to my life. As you guys all know, I am an 
avid exerciser. I truly believe in the power of a good sweat. And since starting the ASEA, I have noticed that my recovery time between workouts and my endurance within workouts has enhanced immensely. I'm able to go longer and harder. I've also noticed, as many of you guys have commented in the comment section, I feel like I'm getting younger or at least looking younger. No, my age keeps going up, but I look back and compare my videos now to the videos I did when I first started YouTube and I feel like I look younger now than I did then. And I do have to say that is most likely because of the ASEA. When I talked to my mother about this product, I mentioned the quality time remaining that my uncle Dan used to speak of and how with the ASEA for her as a grandmother, this product can give her the potential to have a lot longer quality time of playing in the backyard with her grandchildren. In fact, so many amazing, incredible stories can be found in comment sections of this video and on Asiya's own YouTube channel, which I will place down in the description box below. Now, we can't make any medical claims with this product as it is just a supplement. But from my perspective and from all of the um, perspectives and experiences I've read from you guys, this product has done nothing but enhance every single person's life every single person's quality time remaining, whether that be 50 years or 10 years. We see a lot of people talk about med beds, this idea of med beds. Everybody's waiting for a med bed, but what if I told you, in my opinion, the med bed is already here. With the ASEA, what it comes with, each liquid, it's a liquid, each liquid comes with its own shot glass. The shot glass is about two ounces. Each person is instructed to take between four and eight ounces a day. You take a little shot of the ASEA, you swish it around for 30 to 60 seconds so that you allow the saliva to carry the redox where it wants to carry it, and then you swallow the rest. The redox is so genius, and the creators of this product are so genius that in my opinion they really really honored and respected god's design because you see when you take the liquid redox you are allowing your body its own intelligence because the redox is just a tool it's just the signaling for your cells your cells your body is designed to heal itself and this is what helps the body to continue to heal itself and so when you take the liquid your body knows exactly where it needs to send the redox, what part of your body is wounded, what part of your body isn't so stable. And so it sends the redox to that particular area so the cells in that area can start to communicate to get that particular area of the body back to where it needs to be. Now, of course, with this redox gel, you are able to direct the gel wherever you want it to go. So today I woke up and had a little bit of a creak in my neck. So I took the redox gel and I rubbed it on the back of my neck three times within five minutes. I personally, in my experience, automatically started to feel relief. You can also use this as a beauty supplement too. I've been using the gel on my thighs and on my boobs because yes, friends, I am 40 years old and as, as the aging process does occur, the body starts to droop a little bit. And no, I've never had children, so my boobs aren't as droopy as they could be if I had used them to feed a child, but they still are. You know, I got boobs and they, 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 they are, they're starting to sink a little bit. I also have stretch marks on my boobs that I've had my whole life because, you know, they grew at some point when I was a child. So I've been taking the gel and putting them on my chest. And not only have I noticed a difference, but my boyfriend has also noticed a different difference as well. My boyfriend has been putting the gel on his head. As he is in his 50s now, he has started to notice thinning of the hair, as most men do around that age in their lives. And he is starting to grow his hair back which is quite incredible. In fact, I find myself now when I walk past him putting my hand in his hair just to feel all the hair that's growing back on his head. You see, my friends, your body doesn't want to fail you. It wants to keep you going. It wants to keep you healthy. That is how God designed it. And this product is basically the controllers of this world's worst nightmare.
Now, once again, I can't make any medical claims because this product is just a supplement. But from everything I have researched about this product, from all of the people using this product, you really can't go wrong with this product. And because this product uses the intelligence of your body, each individual person is going to start to notice different things occurring with this product. If you are interested in learning more about this product or purchasing this product, Product or even becoming a part of the business of ASEA, please text Bryce Info to 321-216-8047. Again, that's Bryce Info to 321-216-8047 and J or Hillis will get back to you as soon as possible. If you are texting from a country outside of the United States, please make sure that you add plus one. 321-216-8047 plus one is our country code. And in your text, on top of texting Bryce info, just make sure you let Jay or Hillis know that you are texting from a country outside of the United States so they can arrange a call with you on WhatsApp or Signal or Zoom, any application that's not going to charge you. With that being said, another amazing thing about the SEA company is that they do offer a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if this product doesn't work for you or isn't what you expected after the first 30 days, they will refund you. All right, back to our show. All right, you guys, let's look at Doriel's commentary on Emerald Tablet number 10, The Key of Time. The thought which grew in the abyss was the first expression of activity and movement. Without law, which is order, nothing could exist in form. Time, the great secret, is a key to freedom. For when man conquers time, he has also conquered death. Right, exactly, because time is of the body. As I've said earlier, as we said earlier in this episode, the infinite jewel of truth can never be fully read for truth being, brings forth extensions of itself. And as one truth is mastered, other truths appear. Thoth questions the dweller about time and space and the dweller tells him of the beginning of all things in the great void. He tells him of thought which sprang into being and is questioned as to thought being eternal. The answer the dweller is so plain as to need a little amplification to those who have studied the sixth and seventh grade books of the Brotherhood of College work. Don't know the Brotherhood College work, but um, if anybody else knows what that is, let me know down in the description box below. But I can also tell you, uh, you can also study the Yoga Sutras and get a good gra grasp on what uh, Thoth is saying here. Thoth finds that time is angular and movement, yet being within curved walls. And to penetrate into past time, the consciousness must be moved into curves, uh, starting in the pineal and the same exercise as giving early. Again, that's what I was referring to. We, we know the lords of the cycles, the seven lords, if you've been following along, that's the chakra system that goes up the body. So yeah, this is basically, so in this, Dor Doriel is saying the exact same thing I was saying, basically, throughout this commentary. Thoth mastered time and was able to move backwards and forwards in time, seeing strange sights and learning from the sight of man's beginning. Thoth again exhorts man to seek for light, for only thus can they know their own soul. He also tells that in all matter, lighter consciousness exists, though not always conscious consciousness. I like that, conscious consciousness. Thoth tells of his wonderful experience in Amente when the lords opened the path to their own cycles and allowed him to see with his own eyes that which exists beyond. From this, Thoth learned that progression and order are the same in all cosmic cycles and that all are working in harmony towards the same end, the law of one. Thoth was able to see the purpose behind the pushing out into space of cosmic cycles and with the Lord of Nine could feel the drawing together of the extensions of the different ayats. He learned that in the words, which are examples of vibration, lie the key to the opening of spaces and even cycles. He gives a vibration word, which is the key of light. He speaks of interlocking worlds and spaces set apart from one in which we dwell, each of these filled with manifestations of consciousness. He then relates a wonderful experience of calling from within the six dimensions one who had been imprisoned by the Lord of Arula. She was one who, when we occupied the past cosmic cycle, 
attempted to come into the cosmic cycle and failed and was imprisoned by the Lord of Arula. Thought through his knowledge opens a gateway and calls forth this imprisoned consciousness. I believe this to be our own work. As I said, you're calling forth your own consciousness, freeing itself. He commands the lords to release her and by their secret names forces obedience. She then again becomes a part of this consciousness of which she once was before. He states that knowledge is called magic by the ignorant and tells them not to be afraid for all its manifestations of law. Let me read that again. He states that knowledge is called magic by the ignorant and tells them not to be afraid for all his manifestation of law. Everyone has the force if he knows how to use it, but few have the knowledge. Those who fear the unknown make that fear a living thing. All fears of mankind have their source in the dark lords. Conquer fear and be free. Man makes himself, according to his thoughts, a being of light or one of darkness. Mm -hmm.